So I came across a clip from ESPN and it's on it was posted on NFL on ESPN's YouTube channel and they're talking about Jordan Love and the Packers and the contract situation and so I've not yet watched this and I'm curious to see what they have to say and then I'm going to give my thoughts as always and if you guys want more Packers content I put out Packers content twice a day during the weekday typically on this channel um, and I also have a second channel where I cover the general NFL which you can subscribe to. I'll leave a link in the description and also link a video at the end if you want to check that out. So here is the clip and the, the people involved talking here, just so you know. Jeremy Fowler, Lewis Riddick, Sam Osho, and Kevin Ngani or something like that. Don't know how to pronounce his last name. So here we go. Entering the final year of his contract after leading the Packers to the divisional round of the playoffs in his first season as the starter, had a higher QBR and more passing touchdowns than both Lawrence and Golf, and they just got paid this <laughs> offseason. So back here with Jeremy. What's the latest here with Love and the Packers and the contract talk? Yeah, Kevin, the latest is the Packers would like to get this done in a perfect world before training camp. But we're seeing these matters are complicated because Jordan Love doesn't have the body of work. However, for him getting hot late in the season, I've talked to enough people around the league, scouts and execs and coaches, thinking he's a top 10 quarterback right now. And yes, top five, probably top three. Continue. We're seeing, like Jared Goff and others, those guys get paid. And so they're going to have to shake that out. And also there could be a little bit of pressure on GM Brian Gutekunst because we saw what happened with Aaron Rodgers the last few years. It was tenuous. It was ugly at times. They'd probably like a cleaner process right now and just get this done with a quarterback. It's clearly going to be their future. Okay. Is he a top-tier quarterback worth the top-tier money in your mind? Well, it just depends on whether or not, Kev, you believe that 18 starts is enough to make you feel comfortable to go ahead and put him up there in that top-tier 53, 54, or in this case, 55 million per year plus average. Because, look, I have said this 100 times on this show and every other. Contracts are supposed to represent future performance projections. Do yep. you feel comfortable, if you're Brian Gutekunst, the general manager, do you feel comfortable saying, look, off of these 18 starts, 17 this year, one, two years ago, am I comfortable paying my guy who was top 10 in QBR and second in touchdown passes this year, am I comfortable paying him at 26 years old after one season under his belt with all these youngsters that I've assembled around him and he's got an absolute just, you know, treasure chest of young Weapons, young, healthy weapons. Am I comfortable paying them 55 million plus? Well, take if I'm Brian Gutekinds, answer is 100% yes. Hey, what if I'm Jordan Love? I go back to Brian and I say, Hey, look, I was better than Trevor Lawrence, I was better than Jared Goff. If you want to just match it up number for number, and it's supposed to be about the future, right? So go ahead and pay me. And look, this, this is where it becomes so subjective, and there are going to be people going, Look, you no, know, you don't pay him. He only had started 18 games, he hasn't proven anything yet. I mean, the Packers paid Aaron Rodgers after like eight starts. He was the fourth, became like, I'm pretty sure he was the fourth highest paid QB in the NFL after eight starts. That is Aaron Rodgers. But Jordan Love had a similar, almost better season than Aaron Rodgers' first year. So I doubt the Packers are worried about paying Jordan Love. And I think that Gutekunst would happily hand over a ton of money considering that uh, he drafted Jordan Love. And I think that we're going to see a lot of success in the future. You don't pay guys necessarily after they wind up having putting 10 years together and then all of a sudden you feel comfortable. You got to step out there. And with these quarterbacks, we know this. The price ain't going to do nothing but go, on, go up as the salary cap goes up and as the revenues go up. So, hey, look, just go ahead and get it done now because he is the future. And many people, many people with all those quarterbacks I just mentioned would say, I would, I would take Jordan Love before all of them mm. right now if I had to make a choice. I like it. And Lewis, to your point, I think the better question is, not a better question, a different question is, not are you comfortable paying him right now based off 18 games, are you comfortable waiting another year? Because let's remember how Jordan Love right. ended the season last year, last eight games or so, 17 touchdowns, one interception, goes to the playoffs and destroys the Dallas Cowboys. This dude, yeah, he only has 18 starts, but he has two years of watching one of the greatest quarterbacks ever play. And they have two years of watching him in practice, learn and develop. And then the games come, and then that second half of the season comes, and he dominates. I mean, it was elite level play. And not just mm -hmm. the second half, the whole season. 4,100 yards, 32 touchdowns, 11 picks in your first year starting. So if I'm Green Bay, I want to pay him now because if Jordan Love does what a lot of people mm -hmm. expect him to do this season, which is go out there and play like a top 10, top five, top whatever, eight quarterback, if that money is going to go extremely high next year when the salary comes up, yeah. Jordan Love goes and throws for 4,600 yards, 40 touchdowns, 
All of a sudden, it's not 55 million you're talking about. Now you're talking 60, 62, 63. Uh, I, if I'm Green Bay, I, I lock it up right now. Yeah, I think Sam Ocho there makes a great point that if you wait and Jordan Love plays like he did the final eight games of the 2023 season, which I expect him to, um, you, you, you'll you probably have to pay him a lot more money. If Dak Prescott doesn't get paid before the season starts and he becomes a free agent and makes, you know, gets a $60 million deal before Jordan Love gets a deal, then, you know, you could have to pay Jordan Love 62, 63, something like that. And so I do think it's wiser to, to get ahead of it because if I was the Jaguars or the Dolphins, more so the Jaguars having to decide if I was going to pay Trevor Lawrence, I... I've already made my my thoughts clear on the uh, Lawrence contract on this channel, but I, I just think it was too much money to pay Trevor Lawrence, who has pretty average numbers, and I know that because the salary cap increases and these quarterbacks just keep jumping each other, even if they're not the best quarterback in the league, I just think at some point it's too risky, and I think the Jaguars should have should have waited longer because um, you know Trevor Lawrence last year just he he was he was okay, but I just don't think he's a, a clear cut, you know, top, top 10 quarterback and definitely not top five where I, I, in my mind, I see Jordan Love as a top five quarterback, easily top 10. And so that's why I would pay Love much more so than I would have been willing to pay a guy like Trevor Lawrence, but let's continue this. You know, I can think of three guys right now who are just saying, all right, keep on going. And, and two of them played in the Super Bowl, Brock Purdy, <laughs> right? Patrick Mahomes got to rip sure. up his old deal, right? And then Dak Prescott. That's not fair, though, Kev. What? What? What's not fair? What's not fair, Lewis? Uh, well, well, no, no, what, what, no. What I'm saying, I'm saying it in a good way. Trust oh. me. With Patrick, look, there really is no price, dude. Yeah. There is no price. Yeah. I mean, I mean, what is it for Patrick Mahomes? If he said 100 million, would anybody kind of blink an eye? <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't. No. So I mean, he, he just got He's an outlier. Just yeah. You just, if you paid Patrick Mahomes 100 million, though, your team around him would stink. It would. It would be bad. But. I've hundred million would be too much even to pay Patrick Holmes. Set him over here yes. somewhere. Yeah, he, he he's got the Jordan rules. He's got the Tom Brady <laughs> rules that no matter what, it's never going to be enough. You'll make the money through all the endorsements because again, he will be he will be paid and comfortably paid. So hopefully, we get some Jordan Love contract news sometime soon. It is currently uh, June twenty fourth when I'm filming this video, and uh, you know training camp's about a month away. I think it starts July twenty second for the Packers, and I do think. You know, around training camp starting, that could be a time where the Packers and, and Jordan Love get things done. And it sounded recently like Love sounded pretty optimistic about a deal actually getting done. And so I I just don't think the Packers wait to pay him. I don't think Love would want to wait. And I think he's going to get paid. And hopefully we will see what that number is sometime soon. But I think it's over 55. It has to be over 55 with Trevor Lawrence getting $55 million per year. An, an average middle middle of the road type quarterback. So those are my thoughts. If you want more Packers content, subscribe down below. You can check out uh, my NFL channel. Also link it down below.